Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Z Learning right here at Riverbank Zoo and Garden. My name is Milo, and today, whew, we are inside the aquarium. No, not on public side. Right now, we are deep behind the scenes. Hopefully, you have good enough service. We're going to keep our fingers crossed. Last time we did an aquarium feature, we had spotty service. It, it's obviously, it's a, a large building, which means that cell service isn't always the greatest. So we made sure to try to set everything up as best we could. But I wanted to say good morning to everybody. Thanks for joining us today. We have a very special feeding encounter today with our cuttlefish. Diana, nice to see you this morning. Thanks for tuning in. Now I have to, oh my gosh, you're watching all the way from Tampa. Thanks for tuning in from Tampa, Florida. How fun. Austin and Savannah, good morning. Nice to see you again. Good morning, Sarah. Nice to see y'all joining in for Z Learning. And from Piper as well, hello to you. Now today we are gonna get a very up close view of one of our most unique invertebrates here at Riverbanks. But before I go any further, I have to give a shout out to a good friend of mine, Luke Rainwater. Luke, I bumped into you at Riverbanks last Friday during our member opening day. And it was so great to see you. I had to give you a shout out today on Z Learning. Don't forget to write those two important sentences for your homework today. But everybody else, it is so great to see you. Alexis, Pete, and William, hello. Nice to see you all, of course. Welcome to Z Learning. I'm actually joined by one of our Aquarists this morning. Her name is Sarah. And she is going to be leading us through a very unique feeding session. Now, I don't want you to picture the rest of the coral reef. I need you to picture a completely different animal. We briefly saw them during one of our quick walkthroughs of the gallery, but today we are on top of the habitat, which means we're going to have an aerial view of the feeding session. So here in a second, we're gonna turn around the camera, but I gotta say good morning to Gunner Chase. Thanks so much, Sarah. This mask is of course, it's aquarium themed if you couldn't tell. It was sent to me by Reese Gray, made by mom, of course. But good morning, everybody else. Thanks for tuning in. Now today, let's go ahead and kind of make our way over like I said, we were uh, above the habitat, but let me go ahead and turn around this camera and introduce you to our friend Sarah. Good morning. Hi. Nice to see you. Now, Sarah is one of our many aquarists that we have. I know that we've met Kendra before and Jennifer before. They're all a part of the same department. And today, check it out, everybody. We are meeting our common cuttlefish. Now, Sarah, I see, how many individuals do we have in here? I'm trying to count them as we're going. We have six individuals. So I see one, two, three, four on the top of the surface. Hopefully y'all can see with the reflection. And if we look really far down, you might be able to see a couple of them hanging out at the bottom. Hopefully you all are able to see, I am so impressed of how great of a view we have up here. Now this morning, we're not just gonna be checking out our cuttlefish. We're actually gonna be enjoying a kind of a private feeding session. Maybe people can see us from the viewing window on the other side. But today we are going to get to kind of see how these unique individuals feed. Now, Sarah, tell us a little bit more about what do they eat? Uh, they eat various types of crustaceans and fish. Uh, today I'm feeding them shrimp. Shrimp, okay, so mm -hmm. not popcorn shrimp. Don't think of <laughs> coconut shrimp. In fact, actually, do you mind here? Let's go ahead and take a closer look. So the shrimp, oh, cute little container. So obviously uncooked raw shrimp that they're gonna be receiving. Now. Do you hand feed them typically, or how do you typically get them their food? Um, it's a combination. Sometimes they're fine hand feeding, sure. and other times, if they're sitting at the bottom, I have to use a feeding stick. Wow, okay, so then are you then kind of keeping track of every individual cuttlefish to make sure that everyone's getting fed? Yep. Wow, okay, so I have to scroll up. Austin, age six, was wondering, do they each have names? Well, no, the six individuals do not. Most of our aquarium residents don't actually have their own names. And the main reason is, Sarah was explaining earlier, they're very difficult to tell apart, all the different individuals, but that doesn't necessarily mean that there's not a way to identify them. So she keeps track along with the other aquarists to make sure everyone gets enough food, but instead they all have identification numbers to keep track of all of their individual needs. Now, for the feeding today, I, I guess I, I just need to kind of give a quick explanation. Their bodies are very different than most other animals. And we have a couple of individuals hanging out right here. Do you mind kind of pointing out 
head, tail, feet. Where, what are we looking at? <laughs> okay, so this is their head right here. Sure, yep. So on the far left hand side on of the this. On the far individual. left. Yep. Um, they have 10 tentacles. There's 10 of There's them? There's 10 of them. Wow, yes. okay. <laughs> Um, this whole body part is called the mantle. Yep. And then they have a fin that is along the sides of their body. So that fin then just kind of wraps around the whole side of their body. If you kind of, it almost looks like a bed skirt, I would say. <laughs> um, but that's really funny that you mentioned 10 tentacles because a relative of theirs would be the octopus and octopus are known for only having eight. So what's our, what are the two extra tentacles for then? Uh, the two extra tentacles are for feeding, so they kind of tuck them Look. under. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and whenever you'll see, but whenever I put a piece of food there, they shoot out those two tentacles and grab the food to bring it back to their mouth. Wow. Okay. So those other two tentacles are specifically for feeding, and it's almost like they can use them as arms to reach out and grab their food. Because right now, if you look, we're facing the head actually of this cuttlefish. So you can kind of see all those different tentacles. You can see the eyes looking back and forth, but those big long tentacles, kind of, let's say the hunting tentacles or the, or the eating tentacles are a little bit hidden right now. If you want to go ahead and get started with feeding, I'm going to go scroll through some of these questions. Christopher age 10 was wondering if they're related to stingrays. Great question, because I definitely kind of get what you're looking at. You kind of see those big long fins. You kind of see the wave-like motions. Um, Sarah, tell us what these animals actually are related to. Uh, these animals are actually related to squid and octopus and nautilus. So they're all in the cephalopod family. So a big cephalopod family. And cephalopod means foot-like, right? Yes. Okay, so that means that octopus, squids, they kind of all look similar. Um, Cuttlefish just kind of move around differently than some of their relatives would. Um, and where they are in the building, I just saw Stevie's question come through. They're in our cold water gallery. So right now, um, they're actually pretty close to the entrance of our aquarium and reptile complex. Um, so not too far from that big mangrove habitat that we have. Um, no, they do not like to cuddle. I am cracking up. <laughs> Ellie, of course, we get that question all the time. Cuttlefish. Well, are they a cuddly individual? I will say that our pronunciation is going to be very poor. It's not cuddle with D's, it's cuddle with T's. So if you check out our caption, cuttlefish are actually named for a cuddle bone that they actually have inside of their bodies. Um, not made out of the same material as our bones. It's a quite a bit different um, because these are invertebrates, which means that they are without a backbone. Um, but I guess that, that cuddle bone kind of acts like a, a support system for their body. Wouldn't you say so? Yeah, and it's more like an internal shell. Interesting. Okay, so <laughs> instead of thinking of it like a shell on the outside, it's more of like an inside shell that they have. Um, I have to give a shout out though quick. Jessica, thank you so much for donating this morning. The $30 is going to go straight to Riverbanks. Oh, and I, I must have missed another donation. Y'all are amazing. Thank you so much for your support. We got some hungry cuttlefish though. Let's go ahead and start feeding them. <laughs> right. Oh, they're turning all around. They're watching. Now you also might notice in the caption, cuttlefish are an extremely intelligent invertebrate. Whoa, oh my goodness. <laughs> Oh my gosh, y'all. I will be very honest with you. This is my very first time seeing our cuttlefish feeding session. So if you hear a lot of squealing and oohs and ahs, it's coming from me. This is absolutely amazing to watch them go hunting for this shrimp. Look at those tentacles in action. So Sarah's doing a great job of trying to reach around, try to feed all those different individuals. We still have a couple that are hanging out near the bottom. Oh, another quick shout out while we're enjoying the feeding session. Lara, thank you so much for donating. Wow, we are already up to $55. Ooh, Anna, great question. You were wondering, do they see in color? Cuttlefish have great vision, but they don't actually have color vision. When we are getting an up close view of them, you might have saw that they have a very unique kind of like W-shaped pupil. It's a very sophisticated eyeball, which means that they have fantastic vision which also helps, oh my gosh, that was very fast. <laughs> How cool. Which also means that when they are changing colors and camouflaging or changing colors with their mood, 
Oh, we got another fish that's coming to visit. <laughs> So their eyes are very well adapted to see all of those different changes. Oh, Laura, thank you so much. Your support means the world to us. We cannot say thank you enough. Austin and Savannah were wondering where do they live in the wild? Oh, and while I start to answer that, um, we're actually getting ready to feed the ones on the bottom, I'm guessing. Um, one of them actually ate on the bottom. Oh, perfect, okay. So this other one that did it some interest so we're going all the way down. This is our specialized way of feeding our different animals. But back to that question of where are they found in the wild? Austin and Savannah, glad you asked. Cuttlefish are actually found in oceans all over the world. We're looking at common cuttlefish right now. Um, cuttlefish can come in all sorts of different sizes. In fact, some of them can measure almost three feet long in length. So our individuals we have here are full grown. They're about six months old. And Sarah was actually explaining before she started the feeding session earlier um, that they're a very short-lived animal. They typically only live for about one to two years in human care. Um, so this means full grown for them. But we might have to talk about something. Oh my gosh, Anna, you read my mind. You're asking such great questions. She was wondering, do they have any babies? Sarah, that sounds like a perfect primer for you to explain. What are those black kind of blobs on the bottom of our habitat? Yeah, those black grape-like uh, blobs that are attached to the grass are eggs, actually. Whoa! Okay, so not eggs like yesterday with the birds, not a hard <laughs> shell. It's a little bit different of a type of shell, but they've actually laid them here, so they're reproducing here at Riverbanks. Now, do you know how long is it going to be until they end up hatching? And how about how big are they when they hatch out of those eggs? They are about... They are very, very small, but they are... Pretty much a copy of the adults, just very tiny. That is amazing to uh -huh. think of. So they're itsy bitsy, probably no longer than an inch. They're just tiny little critters. And they are truly just like a mere replica of what an adult cuttlefish would look like. Check out this individual who's hanging out with us right now. Now, right now we have quite a unique pattern on this individual. And we talked kind of quickly, you know, notice a bunch of different patterns on them. They can change colors. Tell us a little bit more about that. Um, yes, they have cells called chromatophores that allow them to adapt to their Whoa. surroundings. Oh my gosh, right as you were saying that, they <laughs> must have changed some of those chromatophores that you mentioned that you had a couple of dark sections on his back that kind of blinked almost. It was fascinating to see. So if you didn't catch what Sarah had mentioned, chromatophores are what allows them to change in color. And chromatophores are kind of like color cells, let's call them. So kind of like you have skin cells that remain a certain color. Um, with cuttlefish, theirs can change colors. It's amazing. It's very similar to like a chameleon, except for the fascinating thing with cuttlefish is it's very quick. They can almost change in waves. It's not a slow, it's not a mood change necessarily. It can be at the drop of a hat. It can be to display to other cuttlefish, blend in with their environment. I love all the zebra stripes that we have on right now on all the different cuttlefish. Oh, there's somebody's chasing it down, going down. Oh, we might be able to see, who knows? Oh, it went down too far. They are fascinating. What an amazing animal. Oh, Alexis, Pete, and William, glad you asked. They would like to know, do you touch the cuttlefish? No, we try not to touch any of our cuttlefish. Um, sure. Because they spook very easily, so we don't want to stress them out or scare them. That makes sense, absolutely. And their comfort is of utmost importance. So since they are a wild animal, they don't necessarily crave to be cuddled, let's <laughs> say. Um, so we give them their personal space. We let them be cuttlefish. Oh, Ven, since you might have missed that earlier, the reason why they're called cuttlefish is for that cuddle bone that they have inside of their body, inside of that mantle of theirs. Um, so I encourage you to Google that, look that up later. You might recognize that a lot of people will use it um, as a calcium source, um, especially for kind of birds in human care. I know that we have that on occasion here at Riverbanks too, but definitely look them up. Oh, Gloria, thank you so much for donating. I'm sorry I missed your donation earlier. We're trying to feed all of our different cuttlefish and make sure that everyone's fed. Sarah's reaching real deep. 
And we are up to $82. This is amazing. Thank you all so much for donating and supporting Riverbanks in creating connections, inspiring actions, and impacting conservation. And I will speak from personal experience right now. I am feeling so connected to these animals. They are fascinating. What a unique feeding style and what an amazing invertebrate of our seas. Tara Lynn, age 10, was wondering what's causing them to kind of glow right now. Well, here in the aquarium, we actually have some really specialized lighting um, that kind of replicates the sunlight. It kind of illuminates our habitats. And that's kind of what's giving that kind of purplish tint back here. So that way you all can get a great view when you come visit them here at Riverbanks. Now, if you're ever in the aquarium and you're wondering, well, where are the cuttlefish? You're looking for that kind of big picture window that looks on into their habitat. If you can't find them right away, look down. They love to bury themselves into the sand and they camouflage extremely well down there. Oh, Alexis, Pete, and William, you're wondering what are we doing for Z Learning this Friday? Well, right now the plan is to go behind the scenes at our rhinoceros habitat. Go get a construction side view. We're gonna put on our hard hats and go see what's going on in our new rhino habitat. Nolan, that is such a smart question. Why aren't they called cuddle squid if they're more closely related to squids and octopuses? Hopefully you all caught that great <laughs> feeding adaptation. I might have to agree with you. I think that might be a good name for them too, Nolan. Um, so I have a question for you, Sarah. How often do you actually feed them? I feed them twice a day. Whoa. Mm -hmm. So do you do like a morning and an afternoon feeding then? Yep. And do you do it this kind of same exact format both times? Um, yes. And if I can feed them by just dropping the food in and having them kind of hunt the food. Sure, yeah. Um, that's the best. Uh, and we do that twice a day. So. That is fascinating. Okay, very unique question that came in. So Emily was wondering, do you protect the baby cuttlefish from the adults? This is actually the first time that we have had a successful mating uh, group of cuttlefish. Wow, okay, so mating and then actually laying eggs as well. That's mm -hmm. amazing to think of. Okay, so one more time, we're going to look down at the bottom. This is a first for Riverbank Zoo and Garden. We have never gotten this far in caring for cuttlefish, I guess you could say, to the fact that they bred and now they laid their eggs. So stay tuned, we'll see how it goes. When they first hatch, they're very tiny. And my guess would be just for their safety that we would remove them um, kind of like we do over in the Bird Conservation Center. You remember we talked about the incubators and the brooders too that keep the babies warm. We would do very similar things just underwater instead here in the aquarium. I just saw a question come through of how many are there? Christy, there are six. We have four of them that are hanging out on the top. So you can see one, two, three, four. And then we also have a couple individuals that are hanging out near the bottom of our habitat. I'm just hoping that my, my equipment doesn't go swimming this morning because we're getting such a great view of all these cuttlefish. Thank you everybody so much for sending in all your great questions and your comments. We absolutely love being able to continue to offer Z-learning to all of you. Let's get one more close-up view of our cuttlefish friends before we close out for the morning. What an amazing animal. I encourage you to check out up our caption so that way you can learn a little bit more about cuttlefish if you miss some of our facts. But then also check out our Z-learning activity for today and see if you can get as creative as a cuttlefish with some of your favorite colors or designs. But before we send off and say goodbye, I gotta give a big thank you, of course. Thanks so much, Tara. We could not have done it without you. You're the professional. And thanks so much for letting us join you on one of your twice daily feedings right here behind the scenes in the aquarium. Now, before we go, I wanna mention that we do have more Z learning to come later this week. So join us tomorrow morning. We're gonna go live for a very up close view of our mole rats. I know they're a fan favorite with a lot of you. So join us inside of the Discovery Center tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock a.m. We're gonna be joined by our naked mole rats and our Tomorrowland mole rats as I try to adjust my mask this morning. And then later in the week, we have more surprises still yet to come. So continue to tune in live for Z Learning and we will see you tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. everybody. Thanks so much.